Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about the Artillery Sidewinder X1 and why I think this would be a great 3D printer for you to not only begin your 3D printing endeavors, but also if you are a teacher like myself, this would be a perfect printer to put in your classroom because of the price point and the features. So let's jump right into this right now. So, as I said, this is the Artillery Sidewinder X1. And this is a, what we call a large format printer because of the bed size. Now, originally when I was looking to get one of these, to get the Creality CR10, and I did purchase that from our local micro center here in Columbus, Ohio. However, I ended up returning it because it just didn't suit my needs, and I found it to be a lot more problematic than I had expected, and a lot more maintenance than I was hoping, because as a classroom teacher, and as just someone who loves to 3D print, the 3D printing process is what I want to do. I don't want to do maintenance on a machine continually. And I found that I have done virtually no maintenance on this machine. And that's really what I enjoy the most, being able to get in there. I love the designing of the actual uh, CAD stuff. The CAD part is my favorite. The 3D printing part, as much as I love it, I want it to work. I don't want me to work for it. Now, let's go over this uh, printer a little bit in detail before we talk about exactly why I would recommend it. First, this printer, as I said, is a large format printer. It has a 300 by 300 millimeter for the base here, and then it will print up to 400 millimeters, which is great because it allows you to do some other things. I currently have three other 3D printers, and this is the largest, which is what attracted me to this. The other thing that this printer has, it is a volcano nozzle, and what that means is the nozzle is a little bit longer. It allows the filament to go in there and stay hotter for longer periods, which makes it easier to extrude onto the object or onto the bed. Now this is a direct drive printer, which means it's not a Bowden setup. And that's a good thing if you're one of those people that want to use PLA, ABS, PETG, TPU, this allows you to do it pretty seamlessly just if you know what your uh, slicer settings are supposed to be. Now, it does feed down through here. We can see that up here, we have the actual filament holder up here. You'll notice mine's offset, which I'll talk about that here momentarily. This printer also, it doesn't take up that much space from here to there, nor here to there. Instead, it's the height that is really which is kind of offsetting. But the power supply is built inside of the unit here, and it is quiet. It has a touch screen interface, which is a huge upgrade from the, uh, the Creality CR10, which is around this, the same price point, because this printer only costed $399 when I bought it five days before Christmas, and I actually got five extra percent off of that. So this right here, is a printer that is competitively priced. Now you'll notice that this is a gantry system, as I've said, love it or hate it, that's what most printers are. But the things that I do really love about this printer is the fact that whether it's down here for the bed or on the sides, it uses really high quality aluminum that is thick and more importantly, stable. Uh, I don't get many vibrations at all from this machine. In particular, down here on the heated bed, where the actual heated bed goes back and forth, this printer right here is pretty solid. And because the bed itself is so wide, sometimes you'll get, a, uh, with some other printers, you'll get them to be a little bit uh, wobbly. I don't really have that issue with that. And speaking of the heated print bed, this goes to 130 degrees Celsius. So you can stick a lot of variety of materials on here. And as you can see right now, it's just finished this print. And you probably noticed, that's one of the reasons why I also love this unit, is because it is so quiet. It is extremely quiet to the point I would actually be able to use this in a classroom and still teach. More importantly for this review, I was able to actually show you the print and actually speak at the same time. My other printers, I can't do that. And that's because this printer uses ultra quiet stepper motor drivers. And that's a huge benefit. Now, the other thing that I really, really like about it is this guy right here. This is a flash drive. Now they provide this with you, but you can use your own. It has the ability for you to plug in a flash drive so you don't have to use the micro SD card. Yes, it does use those as well, unfortunately, but this flash drive makes life so much easier. Of course, on the other side is the USB port. So if you wanted to plug this directly into a PC or a Mac or any other computer, you could. In my case, I actually use OctoPrint running from a Raspberry Pi. That's pretty cool that I can do that. The touch screen is really a great addition. I know that we uh, touch screens have been around for a very long time, but when you start comparing the touch screen, this just works much, much faster. I know a lot of people really aren't fans of touch screens because sometimes they're not as accurate when they push on them. But in my case, I found this touch screen to be very accurate. The menus are very, very easy to navigate. And I like that because I don't have to go through menu, sub menu, then another sub menu from a UX standpoint. That's just silly. 
So this right here makes things much easier. The other thing I like, beside the touch screen, it's got this uh, reset button so I can quickly reset it. A huge feature that this particular printer has is thermal runaway protection. And that means that if the printer starts to act a little weird or the G code wasn't written right, this printer, if it starts to get too hot, will automatically shut itself down. So you don't have to worry about it burning parts out. You don't have to worry about having huge problems from that. It does shut itself down. Another feature it has right here, it has the filament sensor that when it comes down, if it runs out of filament, the printer will automatically stop. Uh, that's a great feature. I'm glad to see that on here. And more importantly, because the printer is only $399, you're finding a lot of these features are actually things that you would find on a, maybe on a higher level printer. Another feature that I really greatly appreciate about this entire printer is the fact that when you go to print, all the parts right here are very accessible. And by that, there isn't some weird case that's trying to hold things and it's not proprietary like some printers have. More importantly, it's easy to make micro adjustments on the fly. So I don't have to spend a lot of time taking things apart. And that's what I love the most. All right, now with anything that's good, there's always the bad. There are some things to be on the lookout for this that will make this kind of a, a deal breaker for you. The first thing I'm going to say, are the ribbon cables. I do not find them to be very practical. I don't find them to be something that's going to hold up over time. While I do appreciate the fact that they're very sleek looking, they blend in well, it makes cable management much easier. Ribbon cables by design generally aren't designed to carry a lot of current and voltage. So right here, what they actually had to do, they had to divide the cables up into little micro cables. So like your positive cable will be several different cables. That's how they fit them in there. This is something I don't think is gonna stand the test of time because I think the cables are going to either uh, melt or I just think they're gonna break. And I know this because they actually have provided an extra cable for you in the goodie bag that they gave you. So I think that they knew after that this was designed that maybe that wasn't the best solution. Does it mean that it's gonna break overnight? No. It just means something I have to be on the lookout for. Another thing I don't like about this printer, this filament holder. This is a terrible design for two reasons. One, I'm never a fan of when they put these on a gantry system like this because what ends up happening is you put all this weight at the very top here and laws of physics dictate if there's more weight up here, that is more potential energy that's going to be able to vibrate and shake this. That means then all of a sudden we may have uneven prints, in some cases completely ruined prints because all the weight up here is causing this to vibrate more. So I don't like that and that's the reason why I ended up on my printer. I use carts, I just made this cheap pull out of PVC piping, made a hook, put it on the hook and let it just stream through. This works great for me, it may not work great for you, but I hate that design and I don't care which manufacturer does it, that's terrible. The other thing I don't like about this actual uh, filament holder is the fact that it is adjustable because not all filament rolls are the same. But the problem is that you, in order for you to be able to adjust this, you have to unbolt it so you can slide it. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but if you're somebody who wants to go in there and you wanna be able to change out your filament fast and you have a different type of filament on a different roll that doesn't fit necessarily in here, which is like most manufacturers, then you're going to find that is a nuisance. That also brings me to my other point, which is this unit right here, because it, it's a direct drive system, and it, it has this plastic piece here for you to load in the filament. It's this little lever. This little lever is extremely cheap. It is bound to break sooner rather than later. And they've given you an extra one because they know that thing is so cheaply designed. And I'm just waiting for the day that breaks. But it's just one of those things that you wonder uh, why someone would release that knowing that part was inferior. So be on the lookout for that. So with that being said, I wanna to talk to you about two other things that I really like about this printer before uh, we wrap this up. The one thing I do have to say is because the heated bed, it is so wide, it is so large, it actually heats up really, really fast. It will heat up to 130 degrees Celsius. It does a great job adhering to the plate. And since it does such a great job adhering to the plate, you don't have to worry as much. Now the downside to that is, because it does such a great job, you have to wait until the print is completely cooled before you can yank it off because it's made out of this material that allows you to quickly take something off once it's cooled. So that's great, 
But if you're one of those people that are impatient, you need to get the print off fast, keep in mind that may be an issue. Now, the last reason I really love this printer is because it prints very well. Depending on your slicer that you're using, I'm using Cura, that's all we have access to. Some people will use Simplify 3D, but it prints very, very well. And in the end, that's all that matters. It's not the fastest printer that you're gonna find, but it does print pretty good. The layers are really nice and uh, seamless. I haven't had any issues but a few, and that was more because uh, user error when I was generating the G-code. And it generates a print that you can be happy with to, no matter what material you're using. And in the end, that's all that matters. And I'd like to show you what I mean. So this was something that I designed, and I designed it specifically to print on here. And this is a, a sunflower, and it's made out of multiple, multiple pieces. But you can see that this piece right here had to be a large piece that laid flat. I used some pet G right here, and the layer heights and the precision of this are pretty great. This was actually on draft mode when I did it because I didn't want to sit here forever and have to print. This is something I really, really liked. When I went back, and I've printed this a couple times now on some of these uh, petals, the petals are made out of a pet G, and the, the lines are just so smooth. And halfway through, I, I loaded in another material. I actually loaded in a PLA that had some sparkles to make the orange, and it just did it seamlessly. So this thing prints very, very well. Uh, with some more tweaking, you could probably have this thing at near perfection, which is what I think you want to aim for. And because the unit's so easy to work with, you could do that. So that's my take on the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Is this a printer I would recommend? Absolutely, I'd give it a thumbs up. I'd recommend that if you're getting into 3D printing for the first time, or if you're looking for a, a second printer that's going to give you that bigger base, definitely get this if you're looking for a machine that allows you to have high quality parts where it doesn't vibrate this is the machine for you very quiet very stable very reliable more importantly a great price point of around 399 if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and thank you for watching